Hi, this is Richard Gain from Microcubology and uh, I've got a special video for you today because I've finally managed to combine uh, two of my passions um, making 3D puzzles and 3D printing. As you know, the Microcubology shop uh, presents 3D printed puzzles for sale but um, I also have a 3D printer at home. However, 3D printing your own puzzles on a RepRap machine is very different because uh, the powder printing that Shapeways uses provides its own support material and RepRap machines don't have that. So you have to do this kind of thing where this is support material that's printed by the RepRap machine. Uh, and it stops this piece, this bar, from falling down when you print it. So these pieces, this one, this one, this one, and this one, can all be printed without any support. So I, I like to call these 3D printable pieces. This one isn't 3D printable, because no matter how you lay it, there's always one bit this piece here, for example, which is hanging in mid-air. So it has to be printed with some support underneath it to stop it from falling down as you print the layers. This piece is also not 3D printable without support. But I thought it was worth a go, so I have gone ahead and printed the whole puzzle. Now what I've got to do is remove this support, and I'll show you how that I do this just by taking a pair of pliers and crushing it it should break away quite nicely it's only bonded very loosely to the rest of the um, strong plastic so in theory it should just snap off like that but when you've done that it leaves uh, these rather messy surfaces behind which do have to be cleaned up. Now this one here should also come out. You can see the, um, I don't know how easy it is to see that, but the support material is just a very thin weave to and fro which makes it very weak and it does just break out very nicely. The only problem, as I say, is that um, for such close fitting puzzles, anything that's left behind will jam it and stop it from working. So what I then have to do is, is use a, a craft knife to clean up any odd little strands that have been left behind and there's a, there's always one layer that gets left behind like that however now you can see it uh, perhaps just here there's strands which aren't part of the puzzle they're part of the support material But what I'm hoping is that just with a gentle amount of clean up with the knife I can uh, bring this back to the right dimensions and then hopefully make the puzzle work. trying not to cut into the puzzle but just scrape the surface away very gently right there's another little bit in there that's got to come out these blades are 
designed to break, so I'm trying not to break the blade. Okay, there we go. So, what I should be able to do now, and uh, you might not see see all of this, and that will be deliberate because um, I don't want to give away the solution for this puzzle, which I think is an absolutely brilliant puzzle. This is Pirouette by Joss Bergmans, um, one of my new favourite puzzles. It has a really lovely uh, rotation in it. So, um, excuse me if you can't see what's going on, but um, this will be a good test of uh, whether the pieces fit well enough. To uh, to make this difficult difficult to print and difficult to solve puzzle possible just to get a slightly more comfortable fit it's a little bit tight at the moment but um, if I press on I reckon I should be able to get the whole thing together. doesn't quite want to go. It's a little bit tight. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's very snug. That's it. So uh, I'll carry on giving the, um, the pieces that had the support material just a little bit more clean up just in there. You can still see it's uh, a little bit overstuffed, but um, that's worked really well. And uh, so that's my first 3D printed puzzle produced at home for significantly less than uh, it cost me to get them from Shapeways. So um, plenty of opportunity there for development in the future. Thanks for watching.